Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and we're here today to talk to brand new hams who just got their technician license. The last video, a link to which is in the upper right hand corner of this video, uh, will take you to the very first one where we talk about technician privileges. This one we're going to talk about radios. Everybody wants to have a radio. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is just plain old FM. That's only one mode, but it's a very common mode on the technician privileges. And I'm going to show you kind of the parts and pieces uh, that you'll see with one of these radios. Now, where do you find a radio to buy? Well, there's QST, which is the ARRL magazine. And lo and behold, on the back page, here's one of the advertisements that's in the magazine. There are several others. Now, you should know that there are three big equipment manufacturers, ICOM, Kenwood, and Yesu. And uh, to a lesser degree, much lesser degree, really, Alenco. Now, these are all Japanese companies, and of course, their radios are made in China, but they put people in the factories to make sure that what they put together is truly made in Japan quality, okay? And I know my big HF radio is an ICOM. I've had ICOM, I've had Kenwood handhelds, and I've uh, had Yesu radios. They're, they're all good. Anything you get from any one of those is a good product. Now, recently, we've had the Chinese companies uh, enter the market, and there are a million, million names of them. I still haven't quite figured out the Chinese uh, manufacturing market because it seems like they're always swapping radios with each other and so on. And so it's not like in the U.S. where we can rely on a brand name to be sure that what we get is good. So have to pick specific radios. Now... When we talk about FM on 2 meters and 70 centimeters, these are so-called dual band radios, and those are the two bands that will be covered. These radios come either in the form of a handheld, which is a radio station in a box, really, or so-called mobile, which can also be used at your permanent uh, base setup at home. And you're going to end up with a mobile for your car and a mobile at home and a handheld that you can take various places. A handheld is sort of like handing somebody who has two broken legs one crutch. It doesn't really quite do much. It's very hard for it to get any kind of response for several reasons. First of all, let's look at a typical Chinese handheld. It's FM only, and like all the others, it's dual band. Let's take a look. This right here is a Radioddity radio. Radioddity has connections with other manufacturers there, and so I've sometimes seen Radioddity radios turn up under Baofeng and, and vice versa. Baofeng markets all of its DMR radios through Radioddity. So this is what you'll find in there. This happens to be a particularly good user's manual, even though half of it's in German. So you're going to want to look at this pretty closely. This right here is the programming cable. The programming cables these days all go into a USB port and they all have the so-called Kenwood style uh, connection right here. It goes in the earphone and, earphone and microphone jack. And then the radio knows it's in programming mode. Here is your basic radio. Now they all use the so-called SMA connector. This one right here, the male is in the radio. The female is in the antenna. Some put the male in the antenna and the female in the body. The two are not interchangeable. So we'll just put this on here. Welcome. Now, channel mode. Okay, now the Chinese radios use channel mode to mean what most hams call memory mode. And this right here can switch to another mode. Frequency mode. Frequency mode is what the Japanese manufacturers call VFO. 
their VFO mode. And you'll see right here on the button, it says VFO slash memory recall. And that Hello gives mode. you your two. <laughs> it's so strange. You can put in to the memory the names of the repeaters and stuff like that. So you can have that for quick access and you can program that in. Now you can get programming software from Radiodity and download it or you can get Chirp. The radio, this is the antenna. Now a quarter wavelength antenna at uh, two meters is 19 inches long. So this is a loaded antenna that's too short and it is definitely a compromised antenna. Plus, there's no real counterpoise built in except the frame of the radio inside. These are designed for if you're very close to a repeater or you're talking to somebody, you know, just a few blocks away in the city. You'll see up here your push to talk button. These buttons down here are programmable as to what they might be, as is this odd little button right up here, up on the top. Okay, that's actually a button. Now there's a little LED that you can use when you're transmitting it turns red, see, and turns green when you're receiving something other than dead air. All FM radios have a squelch so that if there's no signal received, it quiets the receiver. You've got some buttons here that go one through zero, and there are still a tiny number of repeaters that have what they call auto patch that allows you to connect your radio to a telephone. Those are pretty much gone because people have cell phones these days. But that's what these are left over for. So they've all got some sort of a switch to go between the top and the bottom. Okay, a lot of them allow you to do what's called dual watch, where you can listen both to the top frequency and the bottom frequency. Okay, menu and back is used for the many menus that are in here. They're explained in the manual, but you can see some of them right here. For example, the lock button and so on are put on the menus right here. So lots of things you can do with it. It's a pretty sophisticated radio. Now, this is your connection. This can be connected to a headset, a speaker mic, something like that. And this is also where the programming cable plugs in here. It plugs in kind of weirdly. It uh, goes up the top instead of uh, down the bottom. And then this actually waterproofs that connection or sort of waterproofs it, okay? Now, all the Chinese batteries that there are, are the same. This one's 3.7, the others are 7.2, but they give the voltage that the radio wants. These batteries, are okay. they are not interchangeable. Now, this one just has the volume control okay. here. Some of them use this to actually change the frequency and you use the up and down buttons to change the volume. So, very strange. Now the proper way to use one of these radios is your thumb here over the push to talk. Okay, and when you're listening you can just listen and when you talk you talk in this manner right straight into the uh, microphone with about two inches two inches back. You don't swallow it and you don't hold it out here. It's right there is where it goes. Remember, sound volume decreases with the square of the distance. So if you go from here to doubling the distance, your sound volume goes down by half, and it just goes out to here where you can hardly hear it in the background noise. Okay, now, you'll need to keep these charged. These have a little charger right here that you can use. Okay, here's a charger and it comes with this. And you want to be careful that you get the one that goes with the radio. If I were you, get a little label machine and, and put on here stickers or something what radio this goes with. Now, you can put this right in there and it will charge it. And once the light down here goes green, probably best to take it out of the charger. Okay, now this has a battery management system in it, but it's not as fancy as some of the, the bigger batteries. Also here is a little speaker mic. Yes, this is a speaker mic. This part goes in your ear, whichever ear you want. And then this part right here 
comes down and it'll be right about here and there's a button on there that you push and when you push that button it goes into transmit mode okay and so yes that's kind of cheesy here is an extra battery for it okay a little handheld or a hand thing I always recommend putting this on sometimes they're a pain to do and then this is a little belt clip that attaches right where those screws are so you can clip this to your belt if you want to I put this in a pocket or something more secure okay now the programming cable does not come with all radios there are different types of programming cable this is by far the most common okay now the next radio we have is this red of us this is an example of a mobile radio so let's take a look at it all right and this is one that I've used this is the RT 95 nice little radio you'll get a separate microphone and it's got lots of buttons on it okay these buttons mirror the ones that are on the front of the radio this is a fairly standard connection uh, Yesu uses this also it looks like uh, just an internet jack but actually that's where the microphone goes okay so on the front you don't have the majority of your buttons on the front you've got on off some programmable buttons a function button and this right here selects whatever the function is usually channel okay it usually comes with a little bracket so you can mount this wherever you need it I've got this one right here which is an AnyTone radio and it's a little hard to see the brackets in here but there's a bracket attached here and then this thing hangs from that bracket okay now um, let's see what all else comes with it the power cord is not very long but it's a lot sturdier than the others this power cord goes down to your it actually goes all the way to your battery you need to route this through the firewall somehow and take this all the way to your battery you'll note that the fuse is pretty close to the battery end this plugs into here it does come out if you push that thing right there so that it comes out but this is what you get now note what's on the back is an antenna outlet almost all radios sold in the United States will have an SO239 right here which means they connect to the PL259 some radios don't here's the speaker it's a bottom firing speaker so if you're going to use this down like this take this put it on the other side so you can get some of the sound out from the speaker or else hold it up like that here again is uh, this time a programming cable is not like the other let's take this out and look at it this programming cable actually attaches where the microphone goes so you take the microphone out and put the programming cable in this attaches to the computer and then you can program all the channels the memory channels in the radio and there are lots lots and lots some uh, manufacturers divide their memory space into sections now the handy thing about that is for example let's say you like to vacation in Moab Utah every so often so you'll have a section devoted to Moab then you'll have another section devoted to a home or something like that or for the journey between that way you can kind of keep them organized and have the memories that you want the memories will tell you which repeater you want to talk to and so on now so that has that this is the mobile radio instruction guide it's uh, all in English there's quite a bit of stuff in here that you'll want to go through carefully now I will tell you that manuals from the Chinese radios have improved dramatically from when I first started dealing with them it used to be they were absolutely no way to understand they were just gibberish now they're really actually pretty good they're using native English speakers to work with them
So now note that this has a speaker here. However, there's also a jack in the back where you can plug in an external speaker if you want something a little bit louder. This is sometimes helpful in a mobile environment if your vehicle is kind of noisy. You can put the speaker up above you, pointing down at your ear so that you'll hear it better than the little speaker that's pointed at the floor. Okay, very common thing to do. Now these microphones have the buttons on them that would ordinarily be on the front of a handheld radio. So there you have it. We've taken a look at a couple classic radios that would be used by new technicians. A handheld and a mobile. Now you probably end up with a mobile in your car and a mobile at home. We haven't talked about external antennas yet, but we will. So this just gives you an idea of what is available. Again, the Chinese handhelds are much less expensive than their Japanese counterparts. I've tested a lot of Chinese radios. And the important thing to remember about them is that they have grown in quality enormously from the first ones. You don't want to get the cheapest radio you can get. That's the Baofeng UV5R. It is pretty cheap radio. One of the very first things I do when testing any radio is to put it on the spectrum analyzer. I want to see where the harmonics are. There are quite a number of uh, Chinese radios that do not meet FCC requirements for harmonic suppression. I actually found a radio that put more power into the second harmonic than it did into the fundamental. So it claimed five watts output where well, you only get two watts on USB and then you're interfering with somebody else. So take a close look at these. I've reviewed all of the ones that I have here and you can look at those reviews and see what you think of the radio that you get. Generally, I like the Radiotity radios and some of the better bow fangs. You can get, like I said, anything you want, or you can pay the extra money and get the Yesu, Kenwood, and Highcom radios. I have one each of their two meter radios, and they work just fine. So there you have it. Next time we're going to talk a little bit about external antennas, both for your car and for your house. So until we next meet, 73.